Okay, I'll call the meeting to order at 7.30. Welcome everybody to uh, June 7th council meeting. Um, could I get a motion to uh, resolve that the agenda for the June 7th regular meeting council be adopted? Moved by Councillor Bobick, second by Councillor Morio. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Item number three, confirmation of the minutes. Uh, resolved that the minutes of May 17th, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Can I get a mover? Councillor Friesen, Councillor Bobbick seconded. Any discussion on the minutes? Not, all in favor? Carried. Okay, we have no, uh, no delegations and no petitions. We'll move on to item number 6.1. Uh, this is the RCMP quarterly invoice package. Um, you guys all have a copy of it. Uh, there's the invoice itself and then a report on the invoice. Any questions to administration on that? Any questions they can forward on? If not, then uh, I got a mover to uh, resolve that the RCMP Municipal Police Service invoice package for the period January 1 to March 31st, 2022 be resolved. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, second by Councillor Morio. Any discussion? None. All in favor? Okay. Item 6.2. Uh, resolved that the letter from the Minister of Municipal Relations dated May 12, 2022 regarding the 2022 Municipal Operating Grant be received. Uh, you guys all have a copy of the letter in front of you. Uh, do, can I have a mover for the resolution? Councillor Friesen, seconder. Councillor Bobbick, any discussion on the letter? Councillor Bobbick, then Councillor Morio. By the looks of these numbers, this is for the total of Manitoba, is it? Uh, Our number's in there somewhere, I've seen it. Yeah. CFO Vanita, do you have the exact number that we received? 243,600. 2260. Attachment B. Yeah. Attachment B. Right in the last page. Oh. <clears throat> so that 243 is that split in various ways, like the. It's. They're, they're not. It's not like an application, it's basket funding, but it's our just our provincial municipal grant. And then they break down the reasoning for the... Yeah, that's what I was getting at, the first number here. It must be for the province, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Councillor Morrow? Nope, no, I'm on the wrong one. I'm okay. No, I my request. All right, then all in favor of the resolution? Carried. Okay, item uh, 6.3, letter from Association for Community Living. Uh, resolve that the letter dated May 27th, 2022 from Association for Community Living regarding their annual general meeting be received. Uh, moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Okay. Um, I assume Mayor Jacobson knows of this date and he'll be able to attend? Uh, I will make sure, yeah. Okay. Um, if not, is there anybody who can attend in his, in his stead? If not, we can discuss after, but we should send somebody. Um, item 6.4. Uh, resolve that building permits 1722 through 2222 with a total estimated value of $105,900 be received. Moved by 
Councillor Bobic, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, I guess just for curiosity's sake, do we know why like there's two different building permits for the same address? Different projects. Yeah, one's a fence and one's a basement house. Okay. But so so we're different projects, you need separate permits or you just can't have it all on one? I believe a fence is a separate line item. Yeah. On it, the, uh, because it's a fence. On the it was well. siding and... Yeah, like if you're doing a bunch of renovations to your house, it wouldn't be for each individual one, it's just because it's a fence. So fences have always been handled okay. separately. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Okay, item 6.5, letter from the uh, community center. Um, resolved that the letter dated 20, May 26, 2022 from Swan River Community Center, also known as the Curling Club, regarding request for financial support be received. Uh, moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Any discussion on the request? Councillor uh, Morio. Um, the resolution speaks to receiving the request, but uh, for me to move this forward uh, or to consider it, I would like to have a delegation or then come forward with that and maybe forward us their latest financials so that we can see what kind of sh um, financial shape they're in um, before we consider a grant or anything. Okay. Councilor Friesen. I have talked to uh, Jerry Dominato and they would be more than willing to come as a delegation. In fact, it says that on the letter. Okay. Uh, Councilor Bobic. Well, they're a nonprofit organization, aren't they? Yeah. So could they not get that in lieu? They get the majority of their building except the Probably. commercial portion of it like the the lounge they pay tax on the lounge yes, right. as far as as far as I understand it I guess correct this, correct me if I'm wrong there CFO Ganita that's what he has in his report okay that's correct. so Mr. Uh, Mr. Poole would you be able to arrange for them to possibly come either to a cow meeting or a council meeting yeah and okay. I will get the previous year's financials yeah that would be prob probably if they could provide that like in a week before the a week before the actual meeting with them. So as far as the resolution on the table are... It's just receiving the letter. Um, regarding, okay, so it's receiving the letter. Okay. Okay, then uh, as far as the question, then I'll call the question on receiving the letter. All in favor? Carried. Okay, we'll move on to item 7.1, Director of Public Works Report. Uh, resolved that the Director of Public Works Report be received. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Bobic. Uh, Director Harvey, would you be able to speak to you your report? Yeah, so quickly I'll just go back. So uh, for the fee schedules, uh, renovations to a single family dwelling, uh, that's one item so if you're doing any renovations to it that would fall under it and then two down from that uh, <coughs> attached or accessory structures and open decks uh, of 250 square feet or less and fences so that's why there was a two just because they're two different line items and then, uh, just give me a sec here uh, yeah so we have uh, springtime our lagoon is uh, getting filled up in the primary cell and so we've been adding ferric to the secondary cell uh, to get rid of the uh, phosphorus in it. So I've just been touching base with the environmental officer regarding that uh, to make sure that as soon as we get our good test results then we can start discharging because uh, we have to discharge it three to four times in the summer to get it right down low so that it's good to hold all winter long. So in the spring we're always uh, Making sure we're doing that is getting the ferric in as quickly as we can, getting the test results so that uh, 
there's no lag, so we can discharge as soon as possible. And then uh, we had our dust control contractor in, so he's doing all the gravel roads around town. Uh, we got some cold mix. We were just waiting for them to batch it up, and uh, they did that, so that's arrived. So we can start doing some more patching. We were doing some patching. We had a little bit left from last year, but this new stuff uh, will bind together a lot better. And then we've been doing curb and gutter work. Uh, we've just been monitoring the river level. And Tamarack Creek got pretty high when the Roaring River overflowed and filled into it. And then we just been talking to the RM because uh, there's a culvert that goes on the road to the landfill that looks like the beavers have been plugging up. And uh, <clears throat> they're just waiting to get their uh, excavator under a trailer or on a trailer and then they'll uh, be opening that up so that'll help drain that out. And then uh, just some items around the office, updating some TDG forms, compiling the lagoon test results for the AERS report, that's the Environmental Regulatory Reporting Information System, so we put that into the <coughs> uh, federal <coughs> government at the end of the year. And then uh, MTI is doing a connection to the sewers, so we're just meeting with them to discuss that. Reviewing the CBA draft that uh, the union sent. Okay. Any uh, any further questions for Director Harvey, Councilor White, and Councilor Bob? Uh, just a query relative to the, the bouquet we get every spring, and I understand it's from uh, Decay and whatever else is happening out there. Are there any thoughts about some way to mitigate that, to reduce that, put more aeration in, put more bubblers in? Because anybody lives on the East side of town, it's obnoxious, and it's a play. but you know that. Is there any plans for the future? Yeah, we have an environmental impact assessment that we're looking at to do uh, that would add aeration, because that's the issue is when the ice comes off, it's anaerobic, uh, so that's when it smells really bad. Um, and then once the air gets into it and it becomes aerobic, then it's not as bad. Um, and so we're just kind of getting close to finalizing that. Uh, and I'll have a report for council uh, once our consultant's done with that, because uh, there's some additional information with that that we are studying for an upgrade that will make it. So that's hydrogen sulfide that produced at the decay process? Yeah, when it's anaerobic. Yeah. And hypothetically, bubblers because a lot of that occurring in the fish world, they're trying different diameters of bubbles, big bubbles, little bubbles, and which puts the most oxygen into the water. So it may be a, a place to check out different kinds of bubbles, which produces the most oxygen into the water. So I just keep thinking that should be an easy thing to fix, but do you have any ballpark idea what it cost to put aerators into? Well, once we, we have a license for the current design, as soon as you upgrade it, then they look at everything. And so that's why we have to do this environmental impact assessment because you can't just upgrade one part of it. Okay. Uh, so that's the issue. So the um, aeration would be part of the upgrade, but uh, then we also need to get it uh, set up for ferric so that we can add that to get rid of the phosphorus and capacity because uh, capacity hasn't been an issue last five years because it's been so dry, but uh, we're getting close this year because of how wet it's been kind of thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Bobbick. Uh, it says you're ordering cold mix. Where would that be ordered from? Uh, that was pro or innovative uh, solutions out of Winnipeg. So they literally make it or is it just this bag stuff? Uh, they bring it in a truck load, like a bulk. Fresh this year. Yep. Yeah. So you bring one truckload, ten truckload. Uh, we brought one truckload because we had two last year, and then we didn't use up all of the second one, and so then it's not as good this year. So we're just getting one for now. We'll see how quickly we go through it. Uh, it's a thirty, um, yeah, thirty MTs the load, and uh, thirty so for me. Thirty MT, thirty tons, okay. metric tons. And uh, so if we use it up relatively quickly, then we'll get another one this year. But uh, if we don't, then we'll bolt off so that we get a fresh.
brush brownish. Okay, yeah, that's probably 20 cubic yards somewhere in that where uh, you think you can use that up pretty quick actually by looking at the clock holes out. And when will that procedure start? Uh, it just arrived today, so. Sometime in the near future? Exactly, yeah. So is there something to be said as the city of Winnipeg they have when somebody sees a pothole, they can phone it in and report it. Is that something that the town would entertain? Uh, if people have issues, they can call. We do get calls every okay. now and then on potholes, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, any further questions regarding the port, Councillor Mario? Um, at the water treatment plant, the PSA upgrade, is that completed or where does uh, it size? Just about, they're just uh, finishing up the last few deficiencies, so some uh, kind of line items with the alarms to <coughs> finalize stuff like that. Okay. And then that would result in it being fully automated and up to date with new yeah. software? Yeah, it was uh, it was automated, fully automated before, just uh, with an obsolete TLC, so then it's hard to get parts. So when this is complete, which I mean it's already installed, so now if something goes down, we can order a part without having to hunt around to try and find uh, parts from suppliers that carry not used parts but parts that aren't being produced anymore. Okay, so it'll be a lot easier to uh, re do any repairs. Okay, and then the, one more question: the, the I guess the generator, automatic generator backup. Where is that with? Uh, is that still with Water Stewardship Board? And yes, that one has been awarded and. Uh, so last I checked, they were just waiting for insurance from the contractor just to make sure they had all their things lined up and then they'll be ordering it. Uh, but it sounds like it's like a 54 uh, week period. So they can do like the pad and some wiring, but the actual generator, it looks like it'll be a year out kind of thing. Okay. Councillor Bobbick and Councillor White. I just go back to Colnick to just refresh my brain here. That is, would any of that be heading towards the cemetery to do some work in there? I uh, will have a look in there. Uh, kind of concentrate on our roads first, but yeah, we could do some patching in the cemetery for sure. Yeah, I just thought some of that older stuff, there's some pretty large areas. You can maybe get rid of it there and use it in, but you'd be a pretty good packer. Also, uh, intersection, at the school, Tim Hortons, I'm saying, is there something that we can move forward to the highways to, there's some really deep ruts in there and I see kids jogging across the lights there when they're not supposed to be jogging across in front of the lights there, but if they're, like you could crack an ankle on that, so I think they should be made aware that they yeah. need to do some patching there. So. Yeah, I can reach out to uh, Superintendent Zamonski. Okay, thank you. You can also include the uh, intersection at Airport Road. It'd be the same thing. Yeah. Councillor White? Uh, just thinking, with the age of technology, and you guys are so uh, competent, is there any medium where, let's say, in my home, let's pretend I have a water softener, which I don't, and it springs a leak and it's pumping water out like crazy, and can our computers identify, hey, there's something abnormal happening here? and flag that, the bell goes off, like in not the industry, other industry, once a kid missed five classes, the computer went ding, hey, go look at this person. So if there's an un inappropriate volume of water bailing out like into the thousands of liters, for example, which happens, can the computer flag that, give you guys a heads up, then we don't get into a debate with our bosses, the constituents, say, hey, you should have known. And I keep thinking that shouldn't be difficult to do. When we do our readings, it can do that. Uh, we do the readings uh, four times a year, That's so we don't have continual monitoring, uh, but when we do our readings, it can show up. If it's had usage. So that's, I, I, you know, you know, that's not what I'm talking about. No, the, the reason being is we did not, when we did our meter switch over, we yeah. chose not to spend the money on the meters that continually read. Yeah. Therefore, we are incapable of doing that for the entire town. We could probably do it for 25%. We ordered the R900Is for 25%. The that would flag it that, hey, there's something abnormal happening here? But we didn't buy the software because we only got so many of those meters. The yeah. rest are the cheap ones that just spin. Are those 25% of our meters, hypothetically, I heard? 
Yeah, but we didn't buy the software to do that. Okay. Okay. But I guess as a homeowner, if the homeowner is that concerned, they can take responsibility for it and they can put their own meter on and monitor it themselves. You can buy a you can buy a non-intrusive meter that would clamp onto your pipe if, if you're that concerned about it and uh, and, I, and monitor I, it themselves. I don't think it was that the homeowner was concerned. I think myself as a counselor, as, as a person, Mr. Smith lives over there and he's not concerned either. Mr. Smith runs a leak some, uh, for four months. It goes on un, undetected. Then that ends up costing our our community, but it's probably cheaper than buying the software. Is what I'm thinking. But did you say twenty? Well, you don't have the software, so it doesn't matter. How much is the software? Fifteen thousand dollars. Well, I guess we'll suck up the water. But but Mr. Smith could could purchase well, a flow meter. It's not yeah. they're not expensive. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Any uh, any further? Uh, Discussion on the Director of Public Works report? If not, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Carried. Item 7.2, resolve that the protective services reports for both April 2022 and May 2022 be received. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? Any questions for administration regarding the protective services report? Hearing none, I will call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item 7.3, Handy Van Report for May. Uh, resolved that the May 2022 Swan River Handy Transit Van be received. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Morio? Um. Can the administration like send a report later or whatever? How this compares with last year's numbers? Like we got the, like the numbers here, but I don't see to see if we're getting users ridership back post COVID, um, or are they roughly remaining the same? They're pretty low compared to pre COVID. Pre -COVID, COVID, so would be uh, able to generate a report <coughs> as to pre COVID, during COVID, and. Yep. Where we're at now. Yep. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Item 7.4 Council and CAO reports. We'll start with Councillor White. Uh, it's been pretty busy. Uh, we had a, uh, a Ukrainian support meeting. That's not quite true, I'll talk about that later. We had an age-friendly meeting on May the 18th. We met with many of the community people. Uh, Derek and uh, Councillor Phil were, were all there and uh, lots of ideas on how to help our aged people. Apparently I'm one of them. And, uh, program, so we'll be meeting again soon. And it looks pretty positive for our community. I can add that the community is doing a lot of very positive things. Curbs, for example, seating, for example, right now. But yeah, I think we can always do better. And I want to thank Derek for uh, doing a leadership role in that. On the 18th, they had a municipal airport commission meeting, and uh, the big issue, one of the many issues, was gas prices and, and how do we tax uh, the constituents per capita or otherwise. So that's uh, still in debate, and I think that's going to be coming up at our G4 or G5, whatever it is. Uh, the Friendship Center had a meeting on the 20th, and uh, it's always nice to see the things that they have for our community, which is so much. On the 20th, also, we had a, a justice meeting, uh, pre plans On the 24th, uh, it sort of relates, uh, I went to Elkhorn for a PMH meeting, and uh, at that meeting it was uh, announced that uh, Councilor Morio is a new representative for Prairie Mountain Health uh, on the Board of Directors, and uh, welcome, uh, welcome, I can't do that, enjoy it. <laughs> See that meeting, and uh, I think we have a pretty positive relationship with PMH because of uh, people who are there, especially the new leader. On the 25th, uh, there was a barbecue raising money for the mentally handicapped. I'd sure like to see everybody in the community out there trying to, uh, to help the community, and I'd like to see the community helping the handicapped. Then the Lions on the 26th had a fundraiser for the uh, Ukrainian community, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, hoping, hoping our, our council might uh, be able to do something more specific. 
On the 27th, I met with the chair of the school division, uh, Gary Wolchuk, and Gary is uh, very willing and able and wanting to involve the school division in working with the town relative to doing something proactive in uh, the Ukrainian issues. On uh, the 29th, I went to the museum grand opening. What a neat place. They do a lot of wonderful things, and it's nice to have it open to the public again where we can participate. On the 30th, I had the Louisiana Pacific Stakeholders Advisory Committee meeting, and uh, they're doing so much good for, for the forest, as far as I'm concerned. They're doing wonderful things for the forest. Uh, is it perfect? No, but it's really good. And if, if we don't put, if we put out forest fires, guys, we have to cut trees. If you don't put up forest fires, let them burn, then we'll have no jobs, we'll have no resource, we'll have no nothing. So uh, we put out fires and provide jobs. And then I met with the, uh, one of the directors from Living Word Bible Institution, and one of the neat things she said that they need to find jobs for the women that come in. I says, why the women? Because I'm naive. Because the men are all still back fighting the war. So the women need jobs to pay for their, their children's daycare, whatever. So they've got lots of rooms, but they're going to need some money for food and, and other such things. It leads me to the next point. I would like council to consider that I, I can take the chair of that, I'll volunteer for that, but I'm going to need help from council. I'm going to need some help from our staff, you know, sending out letters of invitation. And I would like to invite the PMA, and the Elks, the Knights of Columbus, the Lions, LPs, whomever, would have interest in trying to uh, develop a program to recruit the Ukrainian community to help them, obviously from a humanitarian perspective, but also from an economic perspective, how do we keep them here? One of the things they need, ESL, English as a second language, for example, we have to do a skills inventory, what skills do they have? And the school division is really to discuss the possibility of teaching those skills that they're missing, that they need in our community. So there's a, a large group of, of people that will come to the meeting. So if, I, I think it's time that uh, we as a, as a council stood up, and I, me, me, that's fine, we can have others, but I'm going to need some help from uh, Uriah, for example, to track down some addresses, send out some letters, then I'll communicate. So that, you sir, are going to have to make that decision whether he has that time. And I certainly don't have the time. I'll chair it. I can, you've, you've already volunteered to book the hall, provide the Zoom, those kinds of things. But the letter writing and tracking down names, addresses, phone numbers, well, there's no rush. That can happen mid-July. But uh, I would like uh, some comments from council relative should we move forward on that. That's it. Councilor Bobbick. So am, I, am I under the impression that you're forming a committee? Is that what you're doing? I would volunteer to chair the formation of a public meeting we invite the 30 some names I have here, Living Word Bible Institute, Ag Shield, people that use, use need workers. And we, at that meeting, we would do an inventory of what the people can provide for our Ukrainian refugees and who would help in that process uh, recruiting, maintaining, retaining the Ukrainian community. So, so there is no committee. Well, out of that public meeting, there would be a, a larger committee form in the short term. I need all the help I can get, of course, to organize it. So, I guess what I'm getting at is this, do, have people contacted you about doing this, or is this just an idea of your own that you're going to cross all these uh, members? I, I don't want to say it's... Where does this come from, I guess, is my question. I'm not going to say it's my idea on my own, but in, in my conversation with so many, yourself, Councillor Bobbick and others, we see the need, we see the people coming, and I don't see any uh, spearheading to bring all the community. The Lions Club have done wonderful things, both Lions Clubs, people are doing things. But right now it's all over the place, so I think it's important for a council to consider calling a public meeting and say, who can help, what can you do, what skills do we have, what skills do we need. And from that, a committee would be formed. There's one in Dauphin right now, they've taken in, I'm thinking, five families, not that many. It's a big undertaking from a monetary perspective, feed and clothe and train those people. You can't, you can have a hundred beds, but what do they do? So I would like to form a, an active committee, but in the short term, I'd appreciate some help just organizing, having that meeting. So where would immigration services be involved in that? They would be invited to that meeting, of course. I forgot I said that one. And uh, the, right now, their job, as I see it, is simply to look after the ones that are here. They don't recruit. That's not in their mandate. But when the people get here, 
And uh, I don't know that they have the parameters to look after 40, 50 Ukrainian people right now. I don't think we have, uh, we've got beds, but I don't think we have the money to feed them, to clothe them, etc. So short term, the committee of counselors that want to help with that or others in the community, feel free to give me a call. And uh, we'd sit down and say, where is this meeting going to occur? What do we need to know at the meeting? Where do we go from the meeting? It may stop right there for all I know, but I need some help uh, doing that. Sir. Couple questions. Uh, so this is not for the people that are already earmarked to come here? No. So this is like creating a, a needs list or a potential, like a job bank for to recruit additional that, that could be part of it. If that evolves that we have so, the resources to recruit additional, they tell us we can't yeah. recruit anymore. We can't look after what okay, we've got. So, so this is where, uh, like I'm going around in circles here. Uh, if we already know, if we have a batch or a number of individuals coming in here, wouldn't it be easier to determine what their skill set is and then try to match them with potential employers versus trying to start on the big end of what we could potentially offer to match with a few, a few? That's something to consider. But if we find out, in fact, that we've got opportunity to recruit 100, which nobody knows, I don't think anybody knows, right now, then we've become more aggressive. In the interim, let's ask what they, Gary, uh, Mr. Wojcik, the chair of the school division, uh, he agrees with what you said. We've got to find out what skills the ones we do have, certainly. Mm -hmm. But if they continue to come, I think if privy, if one, not privy, it's important for us to be aware of what we've got, what we don't have. Okay, I'm starting to follow you there now. Okay, and I, and I guess seeing as this is the time for reports, this is probably a, a subject big enough for its own agenda item. Maybe we'll, we'll get it put on next meeting's agenda, um, and w which would include a, a, a you know, this is kind of sprung on, on administration right now, and there's been already been requests as far as administration resources. So we, as part of that discussion, we want administration to provide feedback as far as whether that's doable or not. But I think, but I think it's, deser it's a big enough discussion that's deserving of its own agenda item, uh, either for next, probably next Tuesday's meeting is the next time we meet, I guess. But the yeah, to a town yeah. meeting. Yeah. Okay. So, so, <laughs> your worship, but Councilor, I would never have sprung it on, on our director. They know it was coming. We've talked okay. about it. Okay. My my apologies. Then. No, you don't have to <laughs> apologize. Yeah, I just I just don't want no, to I be put in put in a spot where they have to answer without no, giving no, it. No, no. You he thought. knows where my thinking is now. Okay. He'll let me know sooner or later. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for the report, Councilor White. We'll move thank on you. to Councilor Morio. Um. Since I've been away for most of the time, I have nothing. No. Okay, Councillor Bobbick. Uh, attended the council meeting last Tuesday. Uh, there's been some uh, requests on information what would be in the near future for Curry Road. Is it looking towards pavement, or is that something that will be on the agenda? year or two or one or six months or uh, like in a year or two and then it would be uh, a local improvement a year or two of local improvement so with that local improvement would that consider the rate pairs there's only one side of that street am I under the impression that the Thomas Swan River owns the other side of the street and that would be our share that's correct okay thank you there's a it's now it's not done by share it's done by a rate per foot so, uh, I mean, yes, we would be paying That's awesome. whatever they don't cover, uh, we would pay for. So we can tell people right away, because that was one of the issues that people had uh, when we last did a local improvement, because it was done by uh, percentage of all the different frontages. And then they said, well, you say it costs this, but it could be more. And so we came up with a rate per foot. So then when we send out the letter, we can say this is how much it's going to be and then they have their opportunity to either say sure, go ahead or if enough of them come, they can say no, we don't want anything. But at least they know this is exactly what it will be. So I would be under the correct to say that 
they would pay the same perennial foot as if a street could both houses on both sides. That's correct. There was uh, some questions on the intersection. I, like to the driver, I really don't know what the question was on that intersection. There seems to be a stop sign down there. It looked fine to me, but I don't. At the end of Curry Road. Yeah, there, the, that was just a question. What? Time yeah, I have to it? talk to Councillor Montoni to see what the okay. what he was. Okay. Voting. Uh, spoke with a contractor about the grizzly being moved to the yard site, so it's in his plate whenever it's handy for him. So it could be two weeks, it could be two months. That just going back to that stop sign, that is the that is the uh, collision point that we have that's open right now, so that the town holds liability in that intersection if there is a crash, because we know that there should be a stop sign, and we chose not to put it there. So that Coming from the north heading south. Is that's what correct. Saying, yeah. So would a yield sign be surprise for that area? It'd be better than nothing, yeah. You know what I mean? I think, I think there is one currently. I don't Could believe be so. No. I don't, the direction was to remove the stop sign right. and not, not to put in a yield sign. Right. But we can revisit that if council wants. Yeah. We yeah. have to talk to Deputy Mayor Wintoni and see if that's something that he we had a delegation address. on that sign once already. Mm -hmm. I think we did, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that, pardon me? We had a delegation on that stop sign already where we got roasted. <laughs> I didn't want it. Following my sword. Did that come out of that? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, just to go back to the grizzly, it'll be moved in the near future. Hopefully, he'll get in contact with you before he does that. But, uh, watershed. Uh, just speaking a bit about, and I go back to the snow dumping site, and I'm not using that as the site that needs to be used, but there is grants available through MAHC Conservation Trust. It's something that the Town of Swan River can apply through themselves, which doesn't happen to this fall. It is bringing people back to nature. So it really is something we should maybe look into if you're looking at doing some green spaces and stuff like that. Also, in talking with that, uh, this fall there will be millions of trees to give away. Our watershed would be interested in if that area is wanted to be treed, we would be looked at into something like that. With that, we talked a little bit about the water issues and the pooling there in the summer. If that area was treed with certain different kinds of trees, that would probably dry that area up sufficiently. So I mean, this something would be an ongoing thing. Whether Council wishes to move forward with that, but I think uh, our management should give us some direction if that's even something that you want to entertain. Be an ongoing. Uh, just was wanting to talk with uh, Deputy Mayor Martoni. I was looking towards, I would be uh, very appreciative if we could get a COPP update. I would like to hear what's going on there. <laughs> when we spoke of potholes, has there ever been uh, consideration taken into doing some overlays in some of the streets in the town of Swan River in the next few years? Some of these streets? Uh, yeah, we're doing uh, a mill and fill uh, this year, and then uh, we can definitely start looking at uh, some of those thinner overlays that you can put down. Okay, so when you say mill and fill, that's we have to mill there? Uh, the one, yeah, it's because it's delaminated. The top layer is in pretty rough shape. Okay. So there, is there an agenda in years to come up for what streets will be overlaid? Uh, yeah, there will be a program. Okay. Okay. Uh, Conrad Apartments. Any word on anything on that? Just the insurance company uh, expects Christmas. They told us last Christmas that it could be a year before they determine whether whether the insurance claim is accepted or not. But they have all their investigations done, the RCMP investigations done. It's in their hands. In the insurance. Well, it's, it's the owner's responsibility right now. The town has. We would have to get our notices back, but at any time. With proper notice, we can enter the. With, with being a fire, we can enter it and demolish it and turn it to green space. But that, that just comes at a cost. So the decision was yeah. 
really expensive cost. Yeah. 80,000. Okay. Uh, G4 meeting, I presume, sometime at the end of June here? Seventh, I believe. Yeah, I think it is. I just got to check my calendar. Twenty seventh, I have in my book. So on that date, uh, when we meet there, we're going to speak a little bit about the Ukrainian uh, fund that we've kind of created to give to immigration services. So so far, we have three municipalities involved. So would it be fair to say that we should reach out again? I don't know, I guess we are the leaders in this, that reach out to the remaining municipality and uh, make it well known that at this meeting there will be a decision which way this is going to go. And also, that I and, and personally this is my personal belief that there should be pictures taken at that time with the check being <coughs> over to immigration services. So it would be... <coughs> probably good to invite them to the G4 meeting. Yeah. And maybe they could give all the municipalities an update of what is happening through that. Okay, I can let the other municipalities know to prepare a... Did you yeah. actually want to check in the paper? Well, I mean, it's not a piece of paper, I guess. It doesn't have to be the physical, but I mean... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I don't know what the election is. That's something that mayors and actually stand up and take a picture or what it have to be CAOs. Mm. It could be counselors. Oh, it could They're be, different. You're good. You're outside of the 42-day notice period. Counselors are, but mayors are No, mayors, mayors are involved in the Are you time. sure? There was some sort of, there was yeah. a deadline that just passed. That was the deadline uh, for, for the municipalities to pass the bylaw in order to enact it. So that was April 29th. Okay. That was 180 days prior to okay. the election. So you're, you're saying... I guess that these are all my thoughts. I'm not saying this is it, but I'm just... Somewhere we got to move forward with this. So, I mean, this, I would say the G4, we won't meet for another three months after that. So, I mean, anyway, if Council's wishes. Councillor White, you have a question? Uh, relative to uh, Councillor Bobbick's comments, I'm, I'm hoping we're inviting our First Nation partners and the school division to that <coughs> G4, 5, 6, 7 meeting. I can ask Swan Valley West. Uh, they are hosting it, so I will inquire with them whether they will be invited. Okay. Because uh, some are wondering why they haven't been invited. Okay. Yeah, I can inquire. I'd ask. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Friesen. Um, First thing I would like to ask is if anybody has a tent that's 40 by 80, if you oh. do or don't, I need to know. It's a big tent. A big tent. Or two, two of them that would make up that size. Totally and I need it for rodeo weekend for the talent stage. Um, I ran into a gentleman out at the landfill, and I think his name's Kurt. Anyway, he had nothing but great things to say about uh, Jordan, so I'm just passing along kudos to Jordan. He um, helped him out with something, trees or something, but he just said it's really great to have someone be so helpful and not cause him any grief. So, kudos to you, Jordan. I also enjoyed the Age Friendly meeting with um, lots of interesting comments. I <coughs> came to the cow meeting, and yesterday the Communities in Bloom committee met, and we put flowers in the cemetery, the Legion Hall, the Legion Park, out at the Swan, at the Fire Hall, and the arena. Cool. So thanks to the committee, and thanks to Terry's Greenhouse, and Eggies, and Garden Spock, and we even got some stuff in from the needle. So. We definitely shared the wealth. And this Sunday, the uh, United Church Camp is hosting a service to kind of welcome in the summer. Uh, pancake breakfast at 9.30.
and then a church service 11 and a potluck supper. So if you're at the lake, come on over for pancakes. And you don't have to stay for the service, but you're welcome to stay. And then uh, potluck lunch. What's the date of that, Kelster? Sorry? The date of that? Sunday. The Sunday? Yes, this Sunday. 9.30 pancakes. And I think that's um, everything. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay, uh, CEO Poole. Uh, yeah, just a couple of reminders for Council. Tomorrow's uh, beneficiary meeting at 7 o'clock. I know Mayor Jacobson now can attend. And I believe Councilor Morio. I'll be there as well. Oh, okay, perfect. And uh, <coughs> for your calendars, not to forget, June 22nd is the Parkland District AMM meeting. Uh, it starts at 8.45 a.m. in Dauphin, so we'll have an early, <coughs> early start to get down there. Uh, and yeah, that's that's it. Just the thanks to the clerks for being proactive and getting ready for when the tax notices come out. They plan to get them done as soon as possible. Who's going to that meeting at 22nd? <coughs> well, I think Councillor Mintoni opted out. Uh, I'm not there. Yeah, I think it was. And I'm not there. I okay. another conflict meeting. That's, that's Wednesday. 22nd. Yeah. We're in Dauphin on the 22nd. Yeah, I've committed to that already, haven't I? There. I'll meet you there. Yeah. And that's that's it. I'll have a report at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, for myself, uh, I had a probably a record speed uh, planning district meeting last night. Um, Thank you, uh, Councillor Morio, for making quorum for us. Uh, and I also had the <clears throat> cow meeting last week, um, as well as uh, watershed meeting. We had our uh, project planning, project prioritization meeting uh, two weeks ago. Um, <coughs> other than that, uh, that's it for me. So we'll move on to uh, 8.1. Uh, to receive Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission 2021 financial statements. Resolved that the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission audited financial statements for the year ending December 31st, 2021 be received. Moved by. Councillor Friesen, seconder. Councillor White. Uh, discussion on the financial statements. Councillor White. No, thank you. No, okay. Any comments from administration or from uh, representatives from the airport commission? Uh, I guess the only comment is, uh, Councillor, <coughs> there was a debate about uh, the funding process, what, what level of taxation we had uh, per capita or otherwise. So I think that's going to be an agenda item for the G4 meeting because uh, we as a, the uh, commission didn't feel we had the uh, the ability to make that decision independent of all the other councils. That's already came to a G4 meeting and it was, well, there was no moving. back. Am I right? I think it's coming back in. It'll come back until we decide that we stick to the last signed agreement. I, I thought that was decided. If you don't get another agreement, the last signed agreement is the one. That's right. We agree on that. But they want to take I'm it back. sure it'll just come and go on agendas until one is proposed. <clears throat> okay. Um, all any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Carried. Item eight point two. Resolved that the CAO be authorized to support veterans by purchasing a business card black and white ad in the. Manitoba Command Military Service Recognition Book for an amount of $225. Discussion. Councillor Bobbick. It's been done before. Yes. <clears throat> and the business card is the size. Okay. Any Councillor White? I don't think we can do enough to help out the Legion. So $250 is uh, a very small 
thank you, because that's all it is, but uh, to recognize the work that Legionnaires, I think of Ukraine, I think of the land we're living in now because of the Legionnaires and their, their people that came before them. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried. Item 8.3, request the use of the hall during the Northwest Roundup. Uh, whereas the Swan River Valley Agricultural Society used the Swan River Centennial Arena floor for various events in the past during the Northwest Roundup weekend, whereas the arena floor is no longer in use due to the temporary ice making infrastructure, therefore be it resolved the town of Swan River allowed the use of the Veterans Community Hall by the Swan River Valley Agricultural Society starting Wednesday, July 27th until Sunday, July 31st with the following conditions. They are responsible to clean the hall when required throughout the entire weekend, Wednesday through Sunday. You must reimburse the town for bar service, uh, the pop, when used, and volunteer supper is not included. The Ag Society must pay for the hall rental fee. Discussion? Move oh, yeah, and move, can I get a mover? Councillor Bobbitt, second, Councillor Friesen. Discussion? So this must be an ongoing thing every year? So. <coughs> since, since, used, so. since the recording. Okay, so do you do a resolution every year? Yep. I think we have, eh? Okay. Uh, yeah, because of the conditions. Okay. okay. Councillor uh, Moria? So this is the same resolution that we passed pre COVID? No, the, the last one just gave it to them. We've added the conditions. They did clean up, uh, but it's the, the supper that they have for everybody. They, I guess if administration feels they, they're renting the hall, they could have that supper anywhere. Uh, it's not specific to the operations of the egg site that was in the rink. Uh, we want to charge them. So, so where was the volunteer supper beforehand? In the rink. In the rink. You don't have, like, all we have to do is, it's up to council. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Councillor Bollock? So this resolution isn't the same as last year's resolution? No. There, there was no roundup the last two years, so there was no... True. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. But. So this council probably only passed one resolution like this three years ago. Councillor Friesen. Okay, I'm, I'm, I disagree with the last one. The volunteer Supper is in the hall because we can't be in the rink and we do clean up after it and it's all run by the volunteers of the Ag Society and we desperately are uh, financially strapped as the saying goes so I won't vote on that so you're asking, you're asking for an amendment could we okay so do the mover and seconder agree to the amendment yeah, yeah. Okay, um, how much is the rental for the one night? Uh, yes. Six hundred. Six fifty, I believe. So it's, it's updated now. So just for clarification, did we we used to they used to use the arena at no charge? According according to I don't I, I didn't get that information. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to ask Lana. I don't know if she would know because it's been such a. Oh, uh, Mr. Verorchuk? Yeah, when the rodeo used to be in uh, the arena, it was all at no charge because there was multiple deals made in the past in regards to giving land and that sort of thing. Um, there's a whole history that was kind of done by, by Patty Inkelman on it, and there was a point where, you know, you couldn't necessarily go one for one after that. So we started charging, you know, based on the usage, but that previously hit, uh, his, as history goes, um, they had the whole events in the arena from the talent stage to the supper to both taxes. And I believe they were never charged. The only thing they were charged for was labor towards the, towards the last couple of years. Okay. All right. So if we refresh the amended resolution, it should be on your screens. Um, that's the resolution we'll be voting on. Is there any further discussion? Okay, I'll call the question. All in favor?
Okay, move on to, oh, oh carried. Uh, move on to item 8.4. Uh, whereas the town of Swan River provides services in various capacities to all individuals in the community and whereas, and supports community born and led initiatives, whereas the town of Swan River bequeathed land to the board of the Concerned Citizens of North Parkland, but that land has since been sold, whereas Concerned Citizens of North Parkland has dissolved and its objectives have been engaged by Swan Valley Business Consortium and Task Force to carry on such ambitions within the community, therefore be it resolved that the town of Swan River continue to work with the Swan Valley Business Consortium and agree to donate an appropriate parcel of land within the town of Swan River for the specific goal of mental health awareness, addiction prevention, and other initiatives in line with the objectives of the concerned citizens of North Parkland should the need arise. Discuss, uh, moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Bobbitt? So the land is that has been sold, was there an assessed value on that? I, think, I guess what I'm getting at is if we're giving them another parcel of land that should be at the same assessed value. Uh, yes, there would have been. I would have to look that up. I'm, I'm not sure that the assessed value was ever part of the discussion. I think it was the town had to agree on an appropriate parcel, and I think location of the parcel is probably most important. It was downtown here on the west side, east side. So once the town agreed on a location which was felt appropriate, then, then that land found out the value of it. Knowing its value, I don't believe it had anything to, to do with us uh, donating that land. The land has subsequently been sold because they weren't doing, they weren't being successful in the movement. So right now, that that sits completely with uh, the business <coughs> consortium to decide what that is. I, I don't think this is ever going to happen. I hope it does, but I don't. I can't see it. Any further discussion, uh, Mr. Poole? Just to answer that. Question: Seven hundred three Four Street South was assessed at thirteen thousand four hundred dollars, and it was sold for ten thousand four hundred. Okay. Any further discussion? Um, I guess I, I have a comment that I I'd like to make. I don't know if I need to relinquish the chair or not. Uh, no. No, okay. Um, <clears throat> I, I probably should. I'm going to be stating an opinion. Councillor Morio, you're going to chair the, re the rest of this resolution or until I've been speaking. Um, I guess I'm not necessarily in favor of this resolution. I'm not. The, the goals of both the concerned citizens and the consortium, I think they're admirable goals. We should go, but to me, this resolution is too broad. You know, as far as we agree to donate a parcel of land, you know, for un, a really, it's an unspecified purpose. It can be for mental health awareness or addiction prevention or another initiative. Those are very different things. They would have very different zoning requirements. They'd be different parcels of land depending on what thing they were. You know, so I, I think to agree to something this broad without knowing specifics, if, if they have a, a proposal, bring it forward. I, I probably would be in favor of donating land for a specific proposal, but to just say that we're going to donate land for any idea they come up with because that's basically what this resolution we're agreeing to donate land for whatever idea they come up with that's in line with these objectives i you know it in in some ways it's it's too broad and it also puts us into a hard spot as far as uh we may not have land in there or it may corner us into okay we've agreed to give land now does that mean we have to pass a a uh variance or a you know, so I, I think these questions, there's too many questions that need to be answered first before you can commit to this, this type of resolution. So I'm not, I'm not opposed to anything being proposed here. I think they're all things this community needs desperately, but this agreement can come in six months time when there, if there's a concrete proposal being made, the agreement can come. And I, I, you know, just speaking for myself, but I highly doubt I would be opposed to, 
to anything that would be coming, but I want to, I want to see what it is, where it's going to go, how it's going to affect the neighborhood, what kind of zoning it's going to require. Um, there, you know, this year especially with with the teen challenge, I don't want to use the word fiasco, but the the teen challenge, uh, you know, issues that we dealt with with the zoning there, I can see something similar. Uh, you know, where you, you got to do some community massaging, so to speak, uh, within, within neighborhoods. There's just a whole lot of things that would need to happen before you hitch this horse to that cart. So I guess that's my piece on that. Okay. Uh, you done? Yeah. Your speech? You want the chair back now? Or? Sure, unless, unless Councillor White. Or... Okay, sure, yeah. I agree 100% with your comments, sir. So there's two things come to my mind. Where is, where is the source of this motion? And two, I would prefer something like, hey, we're, we're more than willing to, if the, if the business consortium is interested in accessing land for the Dallas Swan River relative to these issues, feel free to request with more specifics when the time is there. Mr. Poole? The resolution came from Councillor or Deputy Mayor Wintoni on behalf of the business consortium. Okay. So I think I go back to my comment. I say, hey, the town is more than willing to entertain the idea of helping these people. When you have a specific place or concept in, in mind, let us know and we'll, we'll, we'll certainly entertain the idea. Okay. Councillor Bobbitt? Do you want to table this motion until Deputy Mayor Wintori can speak on it? If you brought the resolution forward? Yeah, I think that would be appropriate, sure. we got a mover and seconder to table a motion? Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Bobbitt. All in favor of tabling the motion? So we'll table it to uh, the next uh, council meeting. Okay, um, item 8.5. Whereas Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II marks her 70th anniversary on the throne, and whereas Her Majesty is Canada's longest reigning sovereign, and the first to celebrate a platinum jubilee. Therefore, be it resolved, the town of Swan River acknowledges the significant an anniversary by flying the Union Jack at a town-owned facility. Discussion? Um, oh, Councillor White? I think that's a wonderful idea. I don't like the word, but. However, is it possible that the council would also consider flying, and I hope we have more than one flight, because up to very recently we had an empty one, well, two basically empty flight poles over there. Flying a Ukrainian flag at one of our flagpoles. I guess bring a resolution. This resolution deals with this, so, <laughs> so bring a resolution regarding that. Um, can we get that on the next motion, next agenda? Thank you. Oh, and I forgot to get a mover and seconder for this. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Any further discussion? Councillor Bobbick? How long are we flying it for? Uh, I would say the end of the year, at least the winter. We're with it. Okay. All in favor? Okay, item 8.6. Whereas the government of Manitoba has established a fund of $15 million to fund municipal municipalities' financial support to repair road infrastructure, road surface infrastructure. In recognition of the extraordinary winter and spring conditions experienced across Manitoba in 2022, therefore be it resolved that the Chief Administrative Officer sign the one-time contribution agreement in the amount of $47,812.41 from the province of Manitoba to the town of Swan River. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Morio? Um, Mr. Harvey, does Public Works have a plan for where we're going to go Second ahead. Street, so we'll expand that uh, project a little bit. Uh, we're going to use uh, the <coughs> gas, well, it previously was called gas tax, now it's the uh, Canadian Building Fund. Mm -hmm. yes. Canada and building fund. Uh, I spoke with uh, CFO Ganita today, so that one will expand it a little bit, but we'll make sure to use this portion first. and. Uh, then if there's any leftover uh, to the gas tax, any leftover gas tax, then that'll be used next year kind of thing. But yeah, we will, we do have a spot that this will be perfect for. Yeah, I realize like this, this fund won't, like I bet you get for four feet of asphalt, but uh, if there's a, on your list, like in front of 
equal south also is? That one uh, was the gas tax one, mm -hmm. and then further west is oh, uh, where we have some serious alligator cracking. Okay, perfect. I trust you have plenty of holes to fill with. <laughs> yeah. Okay, any other, uh, Councillor Bobbitt? So, <coughs> is this over and above the budget that we passed? So, this is outside the budget. So, this $47,812.41. Is it going to be matched by gas tax money or not? Uh, no, this is a one time only 2022 cash uh, payment to all municipalities. So, instead of using gas tax money, you're going to use this to do some paving? So, we're going to expand our paving a little bit and then but we'll use this first, like use up. Because our bill for the paving will be more than forty-seven thousand eight hundred twelve, so we'll use one hundred percent of this first, and then the remainder of our paving project we'll use the gas tax, and then so if there, if we're under budget a little bit, then that gas tax that was budgeted for this year we'll have it for next year to use up. I, I I what I'm getting at is if you're doing paving and you budgeted for. It's 50-50, isn't it, mm -hmm. on the gas tax? No, it's all gas uh, tax. No, we can use that 100%. 100%. So why would we use this there and not use all the gas tax possible? Because you can carry the gas tax over. Yeah, like, we'll, do, we'll try and use as much of this as we can, but I'm just saying we'll use this, like, 100% of this first, and then, you know, if there's, like, $4,000 left over from what we had planned plus this, that will be gas tax, so that carries over the next year. I guess what I'm looking at is the province of Manitoba to give this to repair because of the harsh winters and stuff, but in reality, you're going to use this money, the repairs are going to see absolutely no difference in what was going to happen, whether this would have came or not. Right? No, we're going to expand the projects that we're doing. We're going to be doing more paving because of this. Maybe we can get like, a detailed Yeah, I'm getting to exactly what we're... So, is this the same thing as that grant that we're talking about fixing potholes? This is it. This, this is, is it. So this what is I'm it. getting at is would it be not better to put it into the repairs of potholes all over town so we repair some of these things and then putting it in a strip from here to the other side of the street? Well, we have a patch on 2nd Street South that's gator cracking and uh, is in quite rough shape with lots of potholes essentially so that was my plan to use the money for that okay and we'll still have a regular pothole patching program okay so but bottom line is this year more road is going to get fixed than would have had we not got the money absolutely yeah go longer but you're not fixing bottle well, the one stretch with potholes will be fixed, yep. yeah. Okay, um, any, other, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Okay, uh, it's carried. Um, 8.7. Resolve that the chief administrative officer approve and sign the 2020 to 2025 collective bargaining agreement between the town of Swan River and QP Local 851. Move. Uh, Just to state, I, I need to change that. It needs to state a uh, memorandum of agreement. Okay. I'll reread Sorry. it once it's changed. Okay, uh, resolved that the Chief Administrative Officer approve and sign the 2020 to 2025 Collective Bargaining Memorandum of Agreement between the Town of Swan River and QP Local 851. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? None. I guess I just want to say thank you to the Bargaining Committee, both from uh, the Town of Swan River side. Uh, 
the administration and I, Councilor Morio sat on that as well as our, our legal representative. And also thank you to the union's uh, bargaining committee. Um, we appreciate the relationship we have with the, with the union workforce and uh, we, uh, this is I guess a testament to carrying on that good, good relationship together. Um, so that's uh, all I have to say, just thank you for the hard work. I know it's, it's a lot of hours that goes into these agreements and a lot of uh, contentious issues get talked about so it's not an easy thing all the time. Uh, any further discussion? If not, we'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, we'll move on to item 10.1. Resolve that accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General checks number 28895 to number 29013 totaling $595,279.10 as listed on Schedule A. Check number 28910 voided due to an item being returned. Uh, payroll account checks number 5099 to 5105 totaling $105,554 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits totaling $775 as listed on Schedule C. Direct deposits totaling $935.81 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by. Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. Any questions on the checks? Councillor Bobak. Uh, check, <coughs> excuse me, check 28913 is for. Uh, replace all the fire extinguishers. I guess what I'm going to ask the question is, do they all need to be replaced or did, was there, I, I know the scenario that we got into because of the, were inspected properly, but was there, what happened to the old ones, I guess is my question. Chief Fedorchuk, Chief Fedorchuk or? About uh, uh, rough estimate, 90% of them were replaced. We kept the good ones that we could. Um, we had a discussion amongst the mid staff and including uh, our foreman and we're going to keep the old ones and use them for training materials uh, so we can get the public works guys some live fire training some of our guys uh, the use of the extinguishers and stuff like that okay thank you okay any further questions or discussion on the That's checks what I said here. hearing none i'll call the question all in favor carried the, I missed the it was uh, Councillor Morrow, Councillor Friesen. Thank you. Okay, item 10.2. Uh, whereas the 2022 capital budget included $16,000 for fire extinguisher replacement, and whereas the 2022 financial plan included $510,000 uh, transfer from accumulated surplus, of which $16,000 was to fund the purchase of said fire extinguishers. And whereas the fire extinguishers have been purchased at a cost excluding GST of $13,834.71, therefore be it resolved that $13,834.71 be transferred from accumulated surplus to the general operating fund. Discussion. Our uh, mover. Councillor Morio, seconder. Councillor Bobak. Discussion. All in favor? Carried. Uh, item 10.3, whereas the Town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials and labor to carry out private works on private property on, on, uh, under the Municipal Act Clause 252E uh, and set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252-1A of the Act, and whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A totaling $3,575.25. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding ta property tax roll and collected in the manner under subse subsection 252.2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising the interest will accrue on set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective July 1st, 2022. Moved by. Councillor Friesen, seconded by. Councillor Morio, discussion. All in favor? 
carried. Okay, no, nothing under section 11 or 12. We'll move to section 13. Uh, resolve that pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, items to be discussed is a offer to purchase on 845 Willow. Uh, moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Councillor White. Oh, do you need me to redo that? No, we're no. good. We're good. Seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone.